Newgrange, an ancient structure located in the Boyne Valley of rural Ireland, was built over 5,000 years ago by Stone Age farmers. Recent DNA analysis of remains found at the site has revealed intriguing details about these ancient Irish people. The monumental tomb, older than Stonehenge and the Parthenon, consists of narrow passages adorned with exquisite Stone Age carvings that lead to chambers used as tombs for the chieftains of the past. Situated near the banks of the River Boyne, Newgrange is part of the larger Brew na Boyne complex, which encompasses 35 Stone Age mounds. The main monument features a central structure surrounded by 97 standing stones, known as curb stones. Many of these curb stones exhibit intricate megalithic carvings. The chamber at the end of the passageway has a cross-shaped design and a 20-foot high corbelled roof made of overlapping stone beams. With a diameter of approximately 280 feet and reaching a height of 43 feet, Newgrange is an impressive testament to the ancient society's architectural prowess. For centuries, the Newgrange site lay forgotten until its rediscovery in 1699. Extensive exploration and restoration work didn't occur until the mid-20th century. The society responsible for constructing Newgrange was likely highly organized, with a well-defined social structure and leaders who held significant influence. DNA evidence suggests that these leaders may have been revered as deities, deviating from typical societal norms. The decline of Newgrange occurred around the 3rd century BC during the Iron Age, coinciding with the arrival of the Celts in Ireland. The site was abandoned and remained dormant for almost 2,000 years. In the 12th century, the land in the Boyne Valley was used for farming and later came under the ownership of Cistercian monks. The name Newgrange was established by 1378, but knowledge of the site's ancient history was lost. In 1698, Charles Campbell purchased the land where Newgrange stands, unknowingly leading to its rediscovery the following year. Campbell's workers uncovered the tomb's entrance stone, adorned with intricate carvings. Further excavation revealed a passageway leading to the inner chamber, where glass beads and bones were discovered. Edward Wood, a Welsh antiquarian, took note of the site and attracted the attention of Sir Thomas Molino. These initial findings provided evidence that Newgrange had been a burial mound. Over the years, Newgrange attracted numerous scholars and theorists who proposed various ideas about its purpose and origins. However, many of these early theories, such as attributing its construction to the Vikings or ancient Egyptians, were proven wrong and disrespectful to the ingenuity of the ancient Irish people. In 1962, Professor Michael O'Kelly of University College Cork conducted significant archaeological work at Newgrange to preserve and restore the site. The monument had suffered damage from the influx of visitors who were captivated by its mystical allure. O'Kelly's intervention came just in time to save Newgrange from further deterioration. Newgrange stands as a remarkable testament to the advanced skills and organized society of Stone Age farmers in ancient Ireland. Its age and complexity surpass those of Stonehenge and the Parthenon, making it an invaluable prehistoric site. The rediscovery and subsequent preservation efforts have allowed us to appreciate and learn from this extraordinary ancient structure. He faced controversy due to his late arrival in the Boyne Valley, where much valuable evidence had already vanished or been compromised. O'Kelly's excavations yielded only a small portion of the presumed skeletal remains that were once housed within the tomb. Despite this setback, he persisted in his efforts, conducting a four-month dig each summer for 13 years, starting in 1962. His dedication bore fruit when a remarkable revelation occurred. During one excavation, O'Kelly and his team cleared away overgrown grass and weeds from the mound's summit. Beneath the vegetation, they discovered a rectangular-shaped opening above the tomb's entrance. The opening was partially covered by a quartz slab, which acted as a shutter to control access to the slit. Initially, the significance of this mysterious roof opening puzzled O'Kelly and his fellow researchers. However, O'Kelly recalled a local folklore that spoke of the midsummer sun's illumination within the tomb, although the position of the opening prevented the midsummer sun from shining through. O'Kelly had a moment of inspiration. 
Considering the alignment of the mound with the sun, he hypothesized that the opening might align with the sunrise on the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year. In December 1967, O'Kelly decided to test his theory. He arrived at Newgrange just before dawn and was astounded by what he witnessed. As the morning sun rose and cleared the hills of the Boyne Valley, a brilliant ray of light pierced through the roof opening, illuminating the center of the main tomb. The intensity of the light was such that O'Kelly could walk around inside without a lamp, clearly observing the details of the tomb. This discovery finally unveiled the purpose of the roof opening, which was designed to capture the sun's rays during the winter solstice. Prior to his work at Newgrange, O'Kelly and his wife Claire had traveled to Brittany in Spain to study similar megalithic structures, seeking to understand their potential European origins. These structures, including Stonehenge in England and the chambered cairn of Maisho in the Orkney Islands, can be found throughout Europe, suggesting a widespread ancient culture with shared skills and customs. Previously, it was theorized that these megalithic monuments originated in the Near East and spread westwards. However, recent evidence uncovered by archaeologist Tina Schultz Paulson suggests that the earliest megalithic tomes emerged in northwest France around 6,500 years ago. From there, they likely spread along the Mediterranean and Atlantic coasts, as well as to Scandinavia, Britain, and Ireland. Thus, it is probable that the knowledge required to build the Newgrange tomb originated in ancient France and reached Ireland through this diffusion. In addition to these findings, DNA analysis conducted by researchers from Trinity College Dublin revealed intriguing information about the bones recovered from the Newgrange Mound. The analysis indicated signs of close inbreeding in one male individual, suggesting that his parents were likely first-degree relatives such as siblings or parent and child. Such a case of incest was associated with social acceptance among elites, particularly within deified royal families. This finding implied the presence of a highly hierarchical society where leaders were regarded as gods. Incestuous relationships among ruling elites were not uncommon throughout history. The Inca Empire and the Pharaoh Tutankhamun are notable examples. Dr. Cassidy suggested that this practice among elites stems from their desire to consolidate power within their kin group, while also differentiating themselves from the rest of the population. By breaking societal norms, they reinforced their divine status and maintained their authority. Subscribe for more updates.